Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled, Neighbor used my driveway as his private garage. I turned on the sprinklers and ruined his cars. With the sheer amount of stories I've been hearing lately about a-hole neighbors regarding cars, I feel like I need to share how I got my revenge on one of them. Okay, I will be the first to admit that parking in my neighborhood is absolutely horrible and there just is not enough room. Most homes don't have a garage and half of them don't even have driveways. The way it ends up working is the street parking kind of becomes a free-for-all to the point that people that have driveways are getting blocked in. I though am lucky enough to have a house with both a garage and a driveway. Sometimes I put my car in the garage and I leave my driveway clear for when I have company so someone like my older mother does not need to struggle to find parking. I don't always bother to take it out of the garage quickly after and that is where neighbor comes into play. This guy has no garage and a driveway. The problem is that he has three cars so street parking becomes needed for him. He usually checks if my driveway is empty because when it is he pulls in there like it belongs to him. Usually I end up having to chase him out so I can either get into or out of my own house and he tends to grumble and move. There is not really a tow company either, so if I wanted to tow him at any point, I would have to call the police and file a whole report every single time. Basically, a whole lot of work for what would end up being pointless as he would have moved the car by then. Then the day happens when I go to bed after a visit and don't move my car back into my driveway, only to wake up the next day to see a car in my driveway. At first I did not think it was the neighbor because I knew his cars, but this turned out to be car number 4 and he wanted a spot to do some work on it. He had tools spread out and was basically treating my driveway like his own personal garage since he did not have one. This time though he would not move the car stating that he had nowhere else to put it and that he needed the space to do work. I should be grateful according to him because his nice car made me look better somehow and when that did not work he told me that I should not be greedy with the space. I was mad and debated calling the police before I really thought about it. Instead of getting angry and fighting with this guy, I decided that I was going to get even with him. Something that I did not mention yet and neighbor also did not know is that I am an engineer. That might not sound like much to most people, but for those that know an engineer, you know that we tend to think of things in a very creative way. We can be like evil geniuses if you piss us off enough and neighbor had finally gone too far. I could not just say nothing though and I warned the neighbor that I was going to be doing some work on my lawn and that he really needed to move his car. He did not seem concerned though and actually left to go back to his house or something. I have one of those sprinklers where I hook it up to my hose and it just shoots the water back and forth. Don't click away though, because this revenge is not just getting his brand new car wet like the title might make it seem. No, instead I was thinking of something a little more damaging. My first idea was to take the sprinkler, fill the holes with paint and then hook it up to a hose for air instead of water. I felt good about it, but when I did that and when I tested it out, it basically failed horribly. The paint only seeped out and seemed to be so thick it got stuck. I was smart enough to test it on an older sprinkler at least, so I did not ruin my main one. Second try though, I was going to basically ruin my main sprinkler, but I calculated that it would be worth it. This time I thinned the paint a little and went back to using water because the pressure seemed better. This time it did shoot out more, it was not anything crazy since I put the sprinkler fairly close to the car anyway, colorful paint started hitting his car and soon it was a multicolor mess. I pretended to go be tending to a different part of my lawn and when neighbor came back and saw the mess, he started freaking out and losing his cool. 
He was screaming at me like a banshee as I stood there and looked at my sprinkler pretending to be confused. I told him I was just watering the grass and had no idea how the entire thing got filled up with paint. I still have no idea if he knew I was lying or not, but I just know he never explicitly said that he thinks I did it on purpose. He was too busy looking over every inch of his new car and seeing the reds and blues splashed all over it. I might want to mention the car was white, so yeah, the colors were very obvious and he was at a loss of what he should have done. I did not want to come right out and say I did this, but I did want to hit the point home that this happened for a reason. I told him that I was lucky my car was not in the driveway and this is the one reason I never park anywhere I shouldn't. You just never know what can happen when you leave your car on someone else's property. I know he got the message that he really needed to go and he got in the car and went to go find parking somewhere else. I know that some people love cars and might be going crazy thinking that I went too far, so let me just quickly calm you down. The paint came off easily and after just a quick wash it was like it never happened. I did not want to damage his car, I just wanted to show him that you cannot just park on other people's driveways and treat it like your own garage. He was just unlucky enough to have an engineer for a neighbor who had an interest in trying to make things that I saw off of things like cartoons a reality. I don't think he's going to be parking in my driveway without permission ever again and that he learned his lesson. Actually, he turned to respect other people's property and that I might look innocent, but I can be an evil genius when I need to. And yeah, ripe stars, if you have watched until here and enjoy the stories about crazy neighbors, then I would really appreciate it if you could post some star emojis in the comments and eventually even like the video if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance, your support is very much appreciated. The next one is titled Phone Compliance. A while ago I used to work in phone support. It was a horrible, menial, soul-sucking job. This job started with me on bottom tier phone support. However, I have always been detail-oriented. I read all the knowledge base articles that came out and made sure that I stayed on the up and up. So on to the story, a new toy came out. This toy was loved by many and bought a lot. However, there was an error. Stuff hit the fan, the company decided to give away a patch that would help anyone with the error. The rule came down that we had to help people with getting this patch out to them. But if there was any issue with the process, the document said we needed to push it up to tier 2. Now enter the story, it had been a long day, back to back to back calls, little to no breaks, no time off the phone, horrid day. I was getting worn out. Everyone was backed up, including the manager line. In comes a customer who calls in very mad that his toy is not working. The caller was being rude, would not listen and was just not working with me. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. I had just about 20 minutes left of work, I was done. I still try to work with the customer on getting his patch and he goes in and has forgotten his password. This was my golden ticket. The article about the patch states that if the customer has any issues using the app, their phone call has to be escalated. 20 minutes left of work, 30 minute hold times for the manager line. I tell the customer that I have to escalate him to a manager, but the hold time is long. Customer seems to be appeased by this, I have to stay on the line and talk to the manager before I pass the call along. A no brainer, I don't have to take another call, spend the last few minutes listening to hold music and make a little overtime. I sit on hold and the manager line picks up. I explain the issue with the manager that he needs help with resetting his password. Manager, that really isn't what this line is for. This is something that you should handle on your own. This is well within your job description as first line phone support. Me? Really? I mean, I understand that and in normal cases I would, but according to this article, if the customer has any issues with the application, I need to send it to the manager line. Manager, what article are you talking about? Me? Oh, article number 1234. It is in the second section, third line. I understand that while this is an easy fix that just takes time, the article does state that any issue they have with the app needs to be escalated. Manager, one second. 
I sit back while I hear him typing and assuming he's trying to find out. Sorry manager line, not today. Manager comes back on and begrudgingly takes the call. I get to bring the customer on the line, introduce him to the manager and then hang up. And then clock off with a few minutes of overtime for the day. A few days later I went to check the article. It had been updated after my call taking off the line about mandatory escalation. But that line did its job for at least one day. The next one is titled Let the customers do it themselves. I am a bar attendant and I don't know if anybody else here can share my pain, but people in the bar industry, especially where I am, take everything way too seriously. Like their lives literally depend on the job, I say literally because they literally won't die if they don't do it. Anyways, so I was working in this bar at a stadium and I had this mega Karen, supervisor, very anal of everything and wanted me to abide by every single rule, official or something, she just clearly made up on the spot. So the night goes off smoothly without a hitch except for one minor thing. As I go to put a lid on the postmix cola of a patron, the supervisor yells at me from across the bar. M for me and S for supervisor. Supervisor. What do you think you're doing? Me, giving a customer a drink she paid for? Something wrong? Supervisor, yes, you are not supposed to put the lids on the cups for the customers. Let the customers do it themselves. Me, oh I'm sorry, it was just intrinsic and courteous to put the lids on the cups for the patrons since they do. Don't you let me see you again doing that. There will be hell to pay. So for the rest of the shift whenever a customer ordered a soda, I would very loudly tell them to do it themselves because I don't have the authority to do it and for them to do it themselves. Of course, some of the patrons would look at me twice or ask me to repeat what I already said and once or twice I even got the supervisor to explain to the patrons how I am not supposed to put the lids on to her dismay and embarrassment. Side note, I would only state the fact that I was not allowed to put lids on the cups when the supervisor was around. I'm not an a-hole, if she was not around I would do it myself because I hate the establishment I work for and I would love to be fired for helping customers. The next one is titled, Rude Lady Wants the Best? Alright. So this is my first post on here but reading through reminded me of a story that happened in my first month of working for a certain retailer that sells things. Anyway, for some background, I work in the parking lot but I am ambitious so I wanted to learn the stock and things like that. So here I am, this nervous little guy in an apron who does not know his ass from his elbow who gets stopped by a small Mexican lady and her son. From what I remembered, they worked for a contractor or something as they were there to buy roofing items for someone other than themselves. They had a list but it comprised of the most vague crappy descriptions of basic items that it was disgusting. I told her that she may need to gather more details by either calling the contractor or letting me know what she was working on. Her response, well you work here, shouldn't you know? Followed by her calling me a pizza faced idiot in Spanish. Immediately I want revenge in my best way possible. I gather from context clues what they were working on more or less, not sure what they needed the fire extinguisher for though. I digress, she told me to find her the best things. If I found the item on her list, some of which were literally just roofing tarp or bolts, she would ask what was the best for her. So for each and every item on the list I would find the most expensive, and I do mean most expensive, items she needed. Of course I did not want to lose my job so I made sure they were what she needed, I just amped up their prices by about 200% and nobody even knew about it. The next one is titled, I let his people go. So I had this guy a few months ago come in and throw a party in one of our bi level suites and he informed us that he would be having guests over and told us to just send them up. I informed him that we would need a list of people so that we did not send up the wrong people and he just shrugged it off in an absent minded, yeah yeah whatever. Well, this night we also had a rather large wedding event with an open bar. So during the directing of the wedding guests, party guys guests start to arrive. And since you know, he never gave us the list, we had to call to drift each person. 
After 5 calls, Party Guy comes down to speak with the MOD, which is me, and proceeds to yell about how inconvenient I was by calling up. I attempted to explain but he was having none of it and said if anyone wants to come to my party, just let them. I tell him, ok. A few more of party guests guests come over and they are all talking about the party and since some of the wedding guests had overheard while he was yelling at me, word had gotten around. So after the wedding guests had enough of their open bar, they start asking about the party guys situation. Now common sense should have told me they obviously were not supposed to be there, but then I remembered party guys public yelling and said F it and told them where to go. It took about an hour but party guy finally started to notice his party had been overtaken and came down to complain. I politely informed him we asked for a list and he refused and even told us directly that if someone wanted to come up we should let them up. He of course did not like that and demanded to speak with a manager in the morning. I assured him they would be more than happy to do so, I instructed security to pull video of his yelling at me in the lobby and had my PM slash NA team write reports and called my director as soon as she came in the morning and explained the situation. She said ok and she would deal with it, party guy got hit with a $2000 F&B bill because the guests of his party kept ordering stuff. I think they settled on $1200 but he still had to pay. I got a talking to about using common sense but at the end of the day I argued that I did exactly what the guest demanded and they really couldn't do anything except tell me not to do it again. And here are ripe stars unfortunately we have once again reached the end of the video. And that of course means that you get to see some more Disney footage. A very sleepy Disney today. And some of you have said that the stuff around her eyes could be a sign for like cat herpes or some stuff. But we have checked that with the vet and um, he's basically, she said it is just either from sleeping or like tears or something. So I guess it's the same that uh, humans have. Like after you slept, I think in German you would say it's like sand in your eyes or something. So I think that is what Disney has too. And the vet said it's not herpes or anything. She's completely fine. Bing. <laughs> Someone touching my finger. <laughs> but yeah, she's such a cutie. Really good cat. Not too active, not too annoying or something. She's just very wholesome usually. Not too loud either then because I was kind of worried about this like for the recordings that I would always hear her meow or something. But she is very well behaved, I gotta say. Even though the owner did not really take that much care of her, but she is very well behaved. A very good cat. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I see you again soon. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.